This is the Two Trees TS2. It's a 10 watt diode laser and comes feature packed. I have had this laser for some months now and this video is all about what I think about it. I'll show you some of the tests I did. I'll tell you what's good and bad about it. We'll also compare it with some of the other lasers and in the end, I'll give you an exclusive code to get a discount when you make your purchase. So hello guys, welcome to Mellow Pine Lasers. Before we move on, the TS2 was sent to us by Two Trees for review and testing. But this is not a sponsored video. I have put in chapters in the video so that you can skip to the part you like. Here is what you'd get when you buy the TS2. You get this one big box within which you have several small boxes. Unpack each and you will find the same standard stuff that comes with almost all the laser kits. Gantries, extrusions, tools for putting together the machine, a user manual, laser safety goggles and some material samples to run tests. If you look at the build quality side of things, it has good quality components. I would stack it up right next to my atom stack but below the Archer and X tool. It had to face quite a bit of bump here and there but there are no scratches or dents which means the extrusions used here are of good quality. When it comes to the looks department, you have a grey finish on the extrusions and a red window on the front. Maybe it's not the best looking laser out there but the TS2 sure makes up for it in all other aspects. The size is huge, it has a large work area of 450 by 450 millimeters, which is slightly above 17.5 by 17.5 inches. You also get a good Z height on the TS2. However, there is one thing that I'd like to point out. In most diode lasers, you can slide in the workpiece from almost all sides. That's not possible on the TS2. The front side is completely covered by a shield and the controller. On the rear, you have this aluminum extrusion on the bottom but you have more than enough room on the sides. Talking about the shield on the front side, this is not just any regular piece of plexiglass, it blocks the laser. Now, let's talk about the laser module. This is a 10 watt module and it's a really small one. It's even smaller than the one on the Archer Laser Master 3. There is a fan inside to keep the diode cool. You also get an air assist nozzle and auto Z function. We'll come to those later. The 10 watt laser on board the TS2 is powerful enough to engrave on wood, acrylic, paper, plastic, stainless steel, etc. It can also cut soft materials like wood. The spot size is 0 0.08 by 0 0.08 millimeters, which is small compared to some of the other 10 watt lasers. This is a good spot size for engraving. When it comes to cutting thick materials, you might want to use the 20 watt upgrade for faster speeds when cutting thick materials. Let's look at some of the tests we did with the laser. I tried cutting 10mm thick pine on the TS2. The first attempt was at 100% power, 100mm per minute speed and 40 psi air assist. The laser can cut through 10mm thick pine in one pass if there are no hard grains. The piece I used had some hard grains on it so it took 2 passes. If you go at 300mm per minute, it will take around 4-5 to five passes with a 40 psi air assist to get a clean edge finish. The ideal speed for me was around 250 mm per minute and 4 passes with a 40 psi air assist to get clean edge and reliable cut. I cut some 3 mm ply on the TS2 at 600 mm per minute, 100% power and with a 30 psi air assist and it took one pass. The cut was clean and the edges had very few burn marks. The curve width was also at par with other lasers. Next. The TS2 was able to cut a 2mm thick sheet of black acrylic at 300mm per minute in 2 passes with a 30 psi air assist. The cut piece had a flame polished edge and the curve width was also minimal. I engraved and cut some synthetic leather on the TS2. For engraving, I used 100% power at 6000mm per minute speed and a low pressure air assist. Once the design was engraved, I cut out the patch using 100% power at 900mm per minute speed. Usually you don't use an air assist for engraving, but when engraving synthetic leather, the fumes produced can damage the lens and the module. A low pressure air assist helps keep the fume away from the module and lens. The result I got was pretty good. Even though the lettering was small, the engraving turned out well detailed. I engraved a stainless steel block tag and the results were good. I used 1500mm per minute speed at 100% power and the engraving had good contrast. Furthermore, the engraving looks sharp and dark. I used 5000mm per minute speed and 100% power to engrave on a painted aluminum business card. 
The laser removes the paint coat to reveal the metal underneath. After wiping it off with a clean cloth, the engraving had a good shiny finish. I used the 2 trees TS2 to cut 1mm thick cardboard at 1500mm per minute speed and 100% power. I used the TS2 to cut a design on cardboard and formed a tube with it to make a candle shade that throws patterns onto the walls. Those were the tests. Before we move on, if you are new to lasers, you should definitely sign up for our free 7 day course called Getting Started with Lasers. It covers all the fundamentals to get you started. And if you are not new to lasers, I would still recommend you to sign up because you will be receiving cool tips and tricks in your email every week after the 7 day course. I'll leave the link in the description below, do sign up and you won't be disappointed. Also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Coming back to the other aspects of the machine, I would say this is the most innovative dive laser in the market today. The first thing I noticed is that the TS2 comes with drag chains on the X and Y axis. I have not seen this on dive lasers much. It could be a bit of an overkill but it sure does keep the cables from getting in the way. The next unique thing about the TS2 is that it has a good auto Z feature. You can set up macros in Lightburn to use it. Two trees have some videos to help you set up the macros. There is a mechanical touch probe that gets activated when it touches the workspace surface and the controller moves the laser head up so that the laser is in focus. The Z axis is motorized and it really helps when you are cutting materials. You can lower the Z axis from the software to focus at the middle of the workpiece. Alternatively, you can also lower the height after each pass so that the laser is always in focus no matter the depth. You also have a knob that looks like a valve on the Z axis for moving the head up or down. The Z axis uses a small stepper motor paired with a lead screw drive. On the X and Y axis, the TS2 uses NEMA 17 steppers and a belt drive mechanism. The Y axis doesn't have two motors but uses a single motor and a shaft to drive both sides. This prevents racking and keeps both sides in sync. For adjusting the tension of the belts, you have this easy to use knob for the X axis and you have a screw adjuster under the gantry plate for the Y axis. The maximum speed of the TS2 is set at 10,000 mm per minute which is quite enough for almost all engraving jobs with a diode laser. The laser module also comes with an air assist nozzle and a tube that you can run through the drag chain. The tube is a really thin one. I use 6mm tubing and the tube of the TS2 fits snug inside my 6mm tube. The nozzle also has a regulator but I keep it open and use my regulator with a proper pressure gauge. I made this so that I could use my sharp compressor as an air assist for my lasers. If you want to know how I did it, I have a video on that, you can check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. The laser module also has an infrared sensor but I found out that it's a bit too sensitive. It was shutting off my laser for tiny flare ups. You can adjust the sensitivity by adjusting the pot on the sensor module but an easier way to do it is to simply put its cap on or cover it with masking tape. But this also means the sensor won't be activated when there is an actual fire. But I never leave my laser unattended. On the electronic side of things, you have limit switches on the X and Y axis that lets you home the laser automatically. The wiring is neat and runs through the drag chain which is a good thing because I have had loose cables getting in the way of the laser. For controlling the laser, the TS2 uses a 32-bit board with an ESP32 chip which means it has Wi-Fi. You can use your phone to run your projects. The controller is housed inside an enclosure fixed to the front frame of the machine, providing easy accessibility. You also have a warning lamp on the controller which lights up when it detects fire. The TS2 also has a gyroscope which turns off the laser if the machine tilts more than 15 degrees in any direction. This prevents the laser from damaging anything else outside the work area. It's a standard safety feature in most dive lasers these days. Then you also have the smart power off feature which turns off the laser after some period of inactivity. The controller also has an emergency stop switch to cut power to the laser immediately in case of emergencies. However, there is no on off switch on the machine. You'll have to use the emergency stop button as a power switch. If you ask me, they could have put in a power switch on the machine. On the connectivity front, you can use USB, Wi-Fi or a memory stick to run files and the TS2 is compatible with Lightburn and Laser Gerbil. Two Trees also has a smartphone app available for Android and iOS devices. I have not used it much because I am a Lightburn fan. But I did use it to see how it is and I think the app is a decent one with all the basic functionalities. Talking about assembly, the Two Trees TS2 laser comes as a DIY kit with parts in three separate boxes. 
The parts are packed in polyethylene forms to prevent damage during transit. Inside the boxes, you will find the machine parts as modules and you have to assemble them. The assembly manual is not very well detailed but there are several videos on YouTube to help you out. The assembly in itself is not so difficult and you can put the machine together in about 45 minutes. If you look at the accessory options that two trees offer for the TS2, you have a 20 watt laser upgrade, an air assist, a honeycomb bed, enclosure with smoke extractor and a rotary module. Now here is the comparison with other lasers. Some of the most popular choices in the 10 watt segment are Xtool D1 Pro and Archer Laser Master 3. Both the Xtool and Archer are priced at around $700 and the TS2 costs around $600 as of now. So cost wise the TS2 is a good choice considering the fact that it comes with a lot of bells and whistles. It also has the largest work area in the segment, it's larger than the Xtool D1 Pro which was the largest one up until I got this one. But this is only going to be a factor if you plan on actually utilizing such a large work area. You can work on large projects like signboards, wall decors, full length skateboards etc on the TS2. However, the TS2 is a new machine and has less number of users compared to the Xtool or Archer, which means it has a smaller community. I have not heard anything good or bad about the support from two trees, so I cannot comment on that. The reasons to buy the TS2 would be it's easy to use, has autofocus, comes with a drag chain, has a large work area and last but not the least, it's about $100 cheaper than the popular ones. Which reminds me, if you decide to purchase this laser, I have a code for you to get a $100 discount. Enter ML100 which stands for Melopine Lasers 100, the channel you need to subscribe to learn everything about lasers and get cool discounts like these. So that's about it, please let me know your opinions in the comments below. If you think the video was good, please click the like button. If you didn't, you could click the other one. If you have any questions, you can reach me at mail at mellopine.com and also visit mellopine.com slash cnc for some cool content. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.